Uh, if I could pin you up here also, it would be good. I'm not, uh, I don't know who's... Yeah, um, Hare Krishna Prabhuji, I'll do that. Uh, I'll do that, Prabhuji. Yeah, please pin Maharaj. And if you could pin Tukaram Prabhu, I'll introduce him also. So I want to thank you so much, Maharaj, tonight. This is really, really exciting. This we, I've been wanting for many, many years for Chandramali Maharaj to come to Jagannath Puri to Bhubaneswar. And finally, we have him at least uh, virtually. And uh, let's see here. Uh, here we go. Yeah, I wanted to add Tukaram Prabhu too. So, Maharaj, I'd like to kind of both introduce you to them and them to you, kind of. Um, so this is Tukaram Prabhu. You can see him below. And he was donated <laughs> by Bhakti Charu Maharaj, who instructed him to come to Bhubaneswar. And that, that has been one of the greatest donations Bhakti Charu Maharaj ever did. He's really, Tukaram Prabhu is such a gentle, sweet devotee. He's really practically single-handedly changed the temple. Now it's become so much sweeter. The devotees are very gentle. He runs the IYF, and he, uh, they have like I don't know about 500 devotees, men and women, in the program. Now they have 10 hostels where they have students coming, and so you'll be speaking to some of them tonight. And so I think for a lot of the the IYF devotees of Tukaram Prabhu, this is a new thing for them. They're not used to Chandramoli Maharaj. Let me just say a few words about Maharaj. He joined ISKCON in 1973, and right away he started uh, serving in New Vrindavan. I first personally met Maharaj, I don't know, maybe it was uh, 1985 or something like that. We were doing Sankirtan <laughs> in uh, North America, and I was always traveling with a group of brahmacharis. And at that time, Chandramali Maharaj was a brahmachari, but he was very different because everybody else would travel with three or four devotees, but he would always travel by himself. And he was always very, very strict about his japa and hearing and chanting, and it's always been a great inspiration for us. And now, although his body looks like it's a little older, actually he's younger than most of the IYF devotees. You just can't see that. And if you don't believe me... You can have you just Google Chandramoli Maharaj dancing in Kirtan, <laughs> and after you watch that, then you'll, you'll understand what I'm saying. So Maharaj, we're so happy that you joined us tonight. I asked Maharaj if he could say a few things about uh, a few different topics, including building community and also uh, how to uh, perfect our life. And also something about dancing, because that's some of the IYF devotees ask us for. So, Maharaj, before you speak, I just wanted to ask Tukaram Prabhu to just say a few words to invite you to come and, and thank you, whatever. Tukaram Prabhu, can you unmute yourself and just say something, Maharaj? Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Maharaj, we are very grateful to you, because you have given your valuable time. And we are very grateful to Madhavanan too, as well, because he has <laughs> brought you here for and giving your association and Maharaj on behalf of all of our team so we are very grateful and uh, we are seeking for your kind blessings association personally here in Bhuvneshwar also online online is one thing but uh, <laughs> whenever you will be coming back to India we request <laughs> kindly visit us here in Bhuvneshwar and give your association thank you the devotees here really like to dance the IYF devotees Maharaj you'll love them <laughs> You 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 really you really tantalizing me with some really <laughs> difficult temptations right now. And, and we'll take you on Parikrama and Puri Maharaj. We'll take you to all the little known places and <laughs> I'm I uh, I'm almost there right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way I feel. I'm not dancing so much here, so we, we need to get back into um, the reality of Krishna consciousness. <laughs> so uh, just addressing the IYF devotees, and I guess everybody too, uh, this is a special program Maharaj does every day. Somebody's, yeah, thank you. It, Maharaj does every day for his disciples and followers. And he's been very kindly agreed to speak to the IYF devotees, but also his group is there as well. So that's what's going on. And Maharaj, if you could say something, we'd be so happy. I'm just so happy to get to see you. I, I just wish you you could be here and we could give you some prasadam and do kirtan with you and like that. Jagannath Puri is like 
I think you can't get any better. <laughs> <laughs> Mubaneswara is just right underneath it, close second. <laughs> You know, when you say you can't get any better than that, it reminds me of the famous comment that uh, 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 that by, uh, my, my brain's going dead, that uh, Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj made to Radhanath Maharaj. And just to make a comment to the devotees also, we had Radhanath Maharaj last week, and Chandra Mali Maharaj is a very good friend for, for many, many years with Radhanath Maharaj and also Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj too. They're very, very close. So thank you, Marge. We'll, we'll quit talking. <laughs> We'd like to hear something from you. <laughs> hey, what should I speak on? <laughs> something about Krishna, whatever you feel inspired for. We, we're just so eager to hear something, Marge. Really? Oh, okay. I I saw your email with the suggested topics, and I'm thinking, wow, this is... <laughs> these are topics that I don't know so much about. <laughs> so. Whenever, whenever you feel inspired by Maharaj, they're just, they're just it's such a rare thing for them to get your Sangha. And I know whatever you say is going to be fantastic. Okay, Omagyan Timirandasya Kiranjana Salakaya Chaksu Umnalita Mena Tasmai Shri Gurudena Maha Shri Chaitanya Manobhistam Staptitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadanti Swam Padanti Kam. Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvishesha Shunyavari Pastyatya De Sitarine Pancha Kalpa Turubhischa Kripa Sindhu Deva Chapatitanam Bhagane Vyo Vaishnavi Vyo Namaha Namaha Sri Krishna, Chaitanya Prabhu, Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Srivasadi, Gaur, Bhakta Vrinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So I'll make a, you know, a little attempt to try to speak something about the topics you suggested. Uh, particularly, the first one was com building community, both principles and practices. Uh, building community, community is a is a word that really denotes a uh, group of individuals who have a particular goal in mind, and how to achieve that goal, and how to satisfy the individuals within the community is more or less the essential principles that make up the activities of a community. Um, finding ourselves within a community and at the same time contributing to the overall vision and direction of the community is really the mindset of the person involved in such atmosphere. We have so many different kinds of communities. Communities is just a general term. There's agricultural communities, there's spiritual communities, there's, you know, social and political and various types of, you know, philanthropical organizations that develop communities. But we're interested in, as a, as a group and as an individual to increase our relationship with the Supreme Personality of God and devotion, devotional service. So that means that uh, there is a particular focus that when you enter into community, that, that is actually what you see as the, to work towards. But then again, what do I need as I become part of a community? Well, I need basic things. I need, I need some kind of security based on my personal needs, such as prashadam, place to rest, uh, ability to move and to express myself. <laughs> okay, and we also see that in, in how to, and find we find ourselves sometimes in, in association with people we don't know, or maybe even people we find maybe it's a little bit difficult to work with. But that's part of the, uh, the austerity and the sacrifice that comes with trying to fulfill a desire that is indigenous, or you might say innate, to each and every person within the community. 
So there has to be some sacrifice there to move forward. We would always say in our Krishna consciousness movement, when we would find disagreements, which happens very often, as Srila Prabhupada says, wherever you see two people, you find two different opinions. So, but then again, there is that opinion that somehow supersedes the individual opinion, which includes the individual opinion at the same time, goes to the source or the source of the problem. And that's the instructions of the, the authorities, and particularly Shiva Prabhupada. So many times when we found ourselves in uh, conflict or disagreement, we would have to resort to well, what did Srila Prabhupada say in this case? And how did he apply the solutions that were similar to the particular situation we're faced? So that helps us to stay together and work together and at the same time find the solutions to whatever difficulties that come by way of what we say, developing the association at the same time, keeping our individual needs and expressions because a community should not be a, uh, an entity that squashes individuality simply for the so-called goal of the community. We've seen that in our society also that, and here's where um, many of the leaders who have been come, become successful understand what was that principle of the success, putting the individual foremost and building the community around the needs of the individuals at the same time, keeping the vision of the community foremost. Um, where we went wrong as a society is that we, we, we underplayed or neglected, or what we say, didn't take into account the needs of the individuals in the, in the community. And therefore, uh, a lot of the persons felt a lack of expression, a lack of significance, or for whatever reason, not feeling enthusiastic to take part in the activities that made up working together for that common goal, which is of course for us is, is to become Krishna conscious. So uh, there's where putting aside personal interests, but I, then you got it, you're coming from two sides those who are who are in charge you might say the leaders the directors of the community should be very uh, affectionate and very much aware of the needs of the individuals and the individuals should be very much obedient to those who are leading the community and Prabhupada made that point very clearly he said he said the juniors should be very obedient to the seniors and the seniors should be very affectionate to the juniors <laughs> in order to keep that relationship uh, on a platform where both can benefit. That benefit, of course, is to move forward in our spiritual life. And at the same time, feel that we can contribute something as an individual. Uh, we all have our individual talents, abilities, maybe personal needs at the same time, along with all these qualities and characteristics that make up our, 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 our life. But all these things have to fall within the category of the needs of the community, or I mean the activities of the community in order for each individual to uh, find their place within that community. And of course, the basic principles that make up the activities of the community are foundation to the success of the community. And that is, of course, in our Krishna consciousness, chanting Hare Krishna <laughs> and making that or, or placing that foremost within our practice of devotional service as a foundation for all our success in, in our practice of Krishna consciousness. Uh, this is the essential principle of our spiritual growth and it also opens up our vision on how to uh, act and react to whatever challenges we face in life. Because Krishna's name, when chanted nicely, without offense, with attention, awakens all the 
uh, everything we need in terms of the understanding on how to live in a community, how to interact with others, how to solve problems, and how to fulfill our own needs at the same time contributing to the, to the bigger vision of the community at large. That means uh, working together in a cooperative way to be an instrument for Srila Prabhupada's mission of spreading Krishna consciousness within the world. So these are just some general, you know, we say principles or consider, considerations that we can, might take into account in order for making uh, our, our activities within the community successful. As Prabhupada used to say, if you don't chant your rounds for one day, you know it. <laughs> if you don't chant your rounds for two days, you and your friend, your friend will know it. And if you don't chant for three days, everyone will know it. So how important it is to keep um, strong in our sadhana, especially in chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. We hear this over and over again, but it, it can't be emphasized enough because it's the foundation for our spiritual growth and the intelligence we need in order to live in an environment which is, when we say, multifaceted and very dynamic in doing various activities. When you look at a community such as the Mayapur community, how multifaceted, how diverse, how diversity in terms of the different types of personalities there coming from different backgrounds, cultures, uh, ways of life, uh, uh, ways of thinking, uh, and sometimes <laughs> even, you know, people in the material world who have difficulties with each other on a national level. Uh, in other words, one nation has a problem with another nation. And then when we come together and we find that there's individuals coming from these same nations, well, we don't take into account what the materialistic say, but we may also have that, that uh, what we say, what's the word, uh, subconscious uh, feeling about other cultures or other, and we can get what we say, either condescending or feeling threatened or anything in like that, but when you would keep Krishna conscious in the center, keep chanting and working together, keeping communications opens on all levels of activity, uh, both individual and as a community uh, based activity, then these things start to disappear in, a, in higher consciousness that we develop. And because cooperation is the, the foundation for service and service is actually the goal of our, our uh, everything we do. In other words, we perform everything in the mood of trying to serve, serving Krishna, serving the words of the spiritual master, his instructions, serving each other, and serving the the mission of the of the uh, community or the society at large. Like that. So how important it is to stay strict in our sadhana not only chanting, but reading Srila Prabhupada's books, not only reading Prabhupada's books, understanding Prabhupada's books, uh, taking that understanding and applying it in the day-to-day -day life that we experience, and then developing qualities and characteristics based on the application that we, that we perform and the skills that also come by way of application. So this is all part of the sadhana that is required. And of course, there's much more to that than, than, than to reading Srila Prabhupada's books because we actually get an, a deep insight of what Krishna consciousness is and the beauty of Krishna consciousness. And when we go in more deeper into the uh, Shastras and hearing about Krishna's pastimes, the pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and then we get an insight of what is the nature of the Lord and how he performs his activities and how he deals and interacts with his devotees in a loving way. 
So that all this makes up more or less our foundation on an individual basis for our spiritual strength, which leads to developing the qualities we need in, to, in, in living in a community and acting in a positive way within that community. And of course, there's much more in, uh, to that. As we grow in our spiritual life, we start to think, what can I, how can I contribute? What can I contribute? What do I have? Srila Prabhupada said, Prabhupada used to say that Krishna has given everyone a particular ability or some talent or maybe something even outstanding. Using that in Krishna's service, using that in order to propagate Krishna consciousness to the outside world, all of these things allow for individual expression to take the form of realization in the practice of Krishna consciousness. And that's what we're looking for, how to realize what we're doing and not just perform it in a mechanical way. And that realization comes from hearing and chanting Krishna's holy name and reading and studying Srila Prabhupada's books. And study takes the form of discussion. Um, it's, I've seen in many places where devotees get together. It's not being done enough, but it's, it's being done in some, some sectors of the society where devotees read and then discuss and try to go deeper into the understanding of what is being discussed. And that opens up so many avenues of understanding because this philosophy is very much the foundation by which we do everything in Krishna consciousness and by which we understand higher principles such as our relationship with Krishna, our relationships with each other, our relationships with the material energy and our ultimately our relationships with uh, well, uh, yeah, with Krishna ultimately uh, in devotional service, that practical understanding of how to serve. So community is really the life. It's, it's interesting because we have to talk about developing community, but Vedic culture was based on community. The traditional Vedic culture was always, everything was done in a communal way, both within the families, within the societies and within yeah, the different sectors of society. People work together more in a communal fashion. As we come into the age of, uh, of individuality, which is more or less a, a feature of the age of Kali, where people are more inclined to, and society is more or less pushing people for personal individual expression as the way for one to live life and to succeed in life. And that has somewhat fragmented both the individual from themselves and from others. So community is something that is natural for a group of people to live by in order to succeed in any aspect of life like that. And so, uh, so community is natural. It's just, it's natural, it's needed. And when it's performed accordingly, then there is so much happiness and spiritual progress available. And then again, then as one develops, they think, well, what can I give? I think we mentioned this, but what can I give back in terms of what I'm getting in terms of the instructions and the guidance, what can I give back? And that's the most important thing because the more you give from what you get, you receive, and also as it becomes part of your individual expression, whatever talents and abilities you have, they grow, they actually flourish when we use those talents and abilities to serve Krishna and serve others. And we get more knowledge. Prabhupada would always say, when you use your time for Krishna, he gives you more time. When you use your intelligence for Krishna, he gives you more intelligence or more abilities. If you use whatever you have, your resources, individual 
resources, these things also grow. And there are numerous examples in our society where devotees have, have sacrificed their own time and energy and given whatever they had, and they were never at a loss. <laughs> The materialists will always think if I give something, that means I lose something. But the devotee always thinks if I give something, automatically I know by giving, I will feel satisfied in that. And at the same time, have more and more opportunities for self-expression and more opportunities to give more. And this is what makes up the community like that. Sachinandana Maharaj talks about, <clears throat> he gives a little analogy of called community of care. It's a nice little parable where <clears throat> the setting is um, the heaven, the Christian conception of heaven. And in that little analogy or a little parable, there is uh, the head of heaven, his name is St. Peter. And there's one curious resident of heaven. He asks St. Peter, <clears throat> Well, what's the difference between heaven and hell? So St. Peter, he knows. So he says, come on with me, we'll go to hell. I'll show you what hell is like. So they take their trip, they wind up in hell. And so the situation is that it's time for lunch prashadam. So a bell rings and when the bell rings, all the residents of hell sit around this big round table and all the food that is meant to be eaten is sitting in the middle of the table and, uh, and so everyone has these long long forks that reach from where they are to the food that's in the middle of the table so everyone's ready and then the bell rings again and that means it's time to begin eating now, the problem is, is that when they put their long forks towards the middle, they usually, <laughs> the forks are so big that they bang into each other's forks and the food falls off. Or when they get the food on the fork, they try to turn it around and because it's so awkward, it falls. So nobody can really enjoy eating and nobody's hardly even eating at all. So they're just struggling with that situation. So then St. Peter says, so you, now you know what hell is like. And then he said, now I'll take you, now I'll come to heaven and we'll see. So the same situation is there. The bell rings, the residents sit around the round table, long forks, the food is in the middle and the bell rings again. And this time everyone takes their long fork and puts it into the food and feeds it with to the person across the way from him. So everyone is being fed by another person and they're all getting a chance to eat nicely. So using this little, you know, parable or a little antidote here to kind of see that uh, a good part of our individual growth is how, how we can see how to serve each other in the environment that we are working together in. And that mood of service really creates a, a friendship and at the same time, it fulfills many needs that we would, we would be trying to fulfill ourselves on our own individual needs, but are being fit, automatically satisfied <clears throat> by the association of other, others and through the process of service. Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. <clears throat> now there was one incident in his particular Leela where there was one very important uh, minister from the local government and he had a kind of a relationship with Bhakti Siddhanta so he would come to him for questions. So he came very respectful, offered his obeisances to Maharaj and said, Maharaj, I have some questions. <clears throat> And Maharaj said, well, normally I would take time, but right now I have some pressing business, but I think you should go see the Pujaris and uh, ask them their questions. I'm sure they, your questions, I'm sure they could help you. So taking the cue, he leaves and goes to see the Pujaris. 
And that time the Pujaris are engaged in polishing the deities, brass, silver, and all the paraphernalia. So presenting his question, saying, Maharaj sent me here. They said, well, <clears throat> we have all this service to do. Why don't you just help us with this service? And then when we're done, you will answer your questions. So fine. He was very agreeable. And so he was working, assisting the devotees, polishing the brass, silver, like that. And then they were done. They turned to him and said, <clears throat> okay, well, I think you came here for questions. What is your question? He said, well, thank you very much. I was, um, I have no questions. And he turned around and left. <laughs> and while he was leaving, he passed by Bhakti Siddhanta who noticed him and said, did the Pujaris answer your question? He said, oh yes, thank you very much, Maharaj. So he found all his answers as soon as he engaged in service. And it wasn't so much only the service, but he was willing to surrender to the situation that he found himself in. And when he did, and he simply gave up his own ideas of getting the answers for questions and then just insisted in serving the devotees and serving the Lord. He got realizations on all the questions that he was about to ask. That's an interesting point. It shows the power of, of surrender and service and devotion. And that's what it really takes. It takes that kind of a mood of giving up what we think is best for us and working together in a cooperative way to serve the mission of Lord Chaitanya. And of course, that's one aspect of it. The other aspect of it is those who are in charge of the communities. And this is sometimes where we fall short. They have to be very attentive to the needs of the devotees and make sure all the devotees are getting everything they need to fulfill their service requirements and at the same time their personal needs. And this is where Radhana Swami was very successful because <clears throat> he, as he explained, and that he did something different when he developed his community in Chalpati in Bombay. He saw that in the other communities that were developing, they were focusing on giving philosophical knowledge and uh, keeping the needs of the community foremost and wasn't giving much attention to the individual. So he pushed all of that aside and just focused on the individuals. And he explains that this is where, the, where success came. As he said, if you make the devotees happy, then the devotees will be able to surrender more and more. Happy devotees make a healthy community <laughs> like that. So these are some of the things that uh, we can maybe think about in terms of entering into a larger group and how these the dynamics of success are based on certain principles. And the, the most important principle is the mood of service, and which is also coupled with the, the mood of serving <clears throat> whatever, whenever it is required and not just, uh, in other words, there are, well, what's the word? You know, in other words, instead of picking and choosing, we more or less try to surrender to the needs of the time. And surrender is so nice. It's such a word that people don't understand. It thinks it sounds like you're giving up something, but actually surrender means getting rid of those things that you don't need, really. <laughs> That's what surrender is actually all about. Yeah. Andrew, <clears throat> Andrew was frustrated when he tried to uh, retaliate against the Vrindavan community for failing to perform his yearly sacrifice, blaming Krishna, who he didn't recognize as the Supreme Lord as being the person who caused him <clears throat> to, to miss out on his sacrifice. <clears throat> but then when, <clears throat> when he realized who this Krishna was, <clears throat> he, had, he had to surrender. 
And when he did, he actually received the mercy of the Lord. So, yeah, he got rid of his false ego by the grace of Krishna. So this is a little bit about community that we can uh, think about. There's much, much more. And uh, devotees like uh, Bhakti Churu Maharaj, who was very, very successful in building a wonderful community in Ujjain. I spent much time there. How he had so much visions of always expanding the community to facilitate more and more activities, which were uh, devotional, at the same time serving the local community with Food for Life programs developing a whole program for making deities and transporting deities to different places and open up a, a, a very successful Ayurvedic hospital, so many things. And Maharaj was very, very personal, very, very loving, very, very caring. And when you meet someone who's like that, you just want to do you want to go out of your way to satisfy people, a person like that. So that was that was Bhakti Charu Maharaj's, and his legacy lives on as his devotees, who imbibe that spirit and that mood that he created, are continuing on and trying to keep that spirit alive in their own devotional life. And again, one of the things that when I used to go to Ujjain. Um, I would go usually sometimes for kirtan programs and uh, and the, the local devotees would come, people from the outside also would come and we would spend like a couple hours in the evening, two, three, or maybe even three or four hours just chanting and dancing, emphasizing the yoga dharma, devotees coming together and chanting and dancing. Susukam Kartam Abhyayam, it's just simply joyful. And uh, this was one of Maharaj's emphasis, uh, was Kirtan. And this was, Shira, this was Srila Prabhupada's emphasis, Kirtan. This was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's life, Kirtan. So when we keep Kirtan and get involved with Kirtan, Sometimes devotees, they, they enter into kirtan and they feel a little shy, either singing or sometimes even dancing. And that may be normal, depending on one's per particular personality and experiences. But when you get involved and start taking part in kirtan, there's this energy that just picks you up automatically and moves you along in the same way that the uh, glorification of the Lord is, and it's, you just feel like a very big part of something wonderful. Sometimes devotees don't want to dance. I think we were supposed to talk a little bit about dancing. But one thing I read about what Srila Prabhupada used to say, and when I first heard it, I wasn't so uh, convinced. But then when I practiced it, I understood it was correct, and that was probably what I used to say. Even if you don't feel like dancing, get up and dance, and after a while, you'll feel like it. <laughs> Just by doing it, you start to feel that that happiness that comes with, uh, you know, chanting and dancing to Krishna's holy name. Uh, so that's something that uh, it works for everyone. <laughs> as soon as we start dancing and whatever way we can dance, the different expressions of dance, that they're multi, there's, there's many <laughs> expressions of how we can dance, but it is part of our essential practice is to sing glories of the Lord in kirtan and take part in dancing and enjoy the association of devotees by taking Krishna prasadam. Yeah. So we call this austerity, but when you look at it, it's not. It's really the, the joyful part of the whole process of, uh, you know, purifying the heart. And it becomes joyful to actually become purified. <laughs> so this is this uh, kirtan. And 
everywhere I've went, and I've been meant to, I visited many places for performing kirtan, and uh, you find that, and Prabhupada used to say this that where you know, as soon as you engage in kirtan, all the material world practically stops. There's nothing material world that just is conspicuous by its absence. It's no longer existing as we immerse ourselves in chanting and dancing. I heard one story, and this was an interesting story of how kirtan uh, settled or corrected a disagreement between two very important leaders in our society. Both of them were actually very prominent temple presidents. And somehow they came into disagreement with each other where they weren't even talking to each other anymore. And uh, not long after that, um, there was a kirtan program and both of them attended it. And there were many devotees there. So there was one devotee, he was also a senior devotee. He understood this discord between these two leaders. So the kirtan was going on and they were, and devotees were dancing and there was a circle around the devotees dancing. And, uh, and so this devotee, he started to dance with one of the, uh, with one of the temple presidents. So that he was dancing with him and so he was, and he was planning this. So he was dancing in such a way that he was moving in the direction of the other temple president who was standing on the other side. So finally, he, he, they danced in that area. And then he very, what we say, uh, strategically <laughs> pulled in this other devotee who was standing there and the three of them started to dance together. <laughs> And then all of a sudden, I guess you could you could understand that the kirtan sort of overshadowed their disagreement, and the three of them were dancing. And then this senior devotee left, <laughs> and the two were just dancing together with each other. And that was the end of the discord. So this is an interesting story of how how kirtan works to somehow or other, uh, you know, dissipate all the negativity that comes by way of living in the material world. <laughs> now, these are some things we can, if you would like to, you know, I can stop here and maybe spend some time responding to questions if devotees have any questions. Hare Krishna, yes, Amritesh Prabhu, you can go ahead. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my blessing. Tukaram Prabhu. Tuk, uh, please give, Tukaram Prabhu. Yeah, please, uh, give us, please give us some of your realizations about managing Maharaj. this community. <laughs> yes, Maharaj. Maharaj, we are trying to develop uh, a similar kind of community here in Bhumneshwar. We are very new, although, uh, but uh, by the grace of the Lord, we are getting very good support. Uh, we are getting good support from students in the congregation. And uh, we are also trying to focus on their personal needs. But then, uh, like, as you were telling, I was just thinking that uh, at the same time, we are making mistakes. Uh, sometimes we focus more on projects than people, or sometimes... Uh, we focus uh, on the aspects of their sadhana and book reading and the morning they get up, and the chanting, the round number around the group. We try to segregate them. And this uh, uh, sometimes uh, hinders us from sharing love. So I was thinking that uh, we have to actually uh, overcome all these things and we have to share our love so that gradually, gradually, they'll become more inspired and then they'll surrender to the process. So we cannot expect results uh, very fast, but gradually, gradually, if we share our love, as you said in your presentation, mm -hmm. so they'll naturally surrender to the process. So that is what uh, I've learned from presentation. Yeah, if we treat devotees like people, instead of just somebody to be used in order to 
get the job done, then and then it's more of a loving mood that starts to develop. Being friendly, being concerned, caring, sometimes even being very ordinary. Ordinary in the sense that sometimes we take interest in their personal needs and uh, in terms of you know how they're feeling or what they need or something. Um, these things don't have to be the main thing, but should be part of it. Um, bringing the devotees together, centered around, you know, hearing and chanting, discussions, kirtans. These, this thing is also brings out that loving mood, that friendship mood. When it's done in a way that uh, inspires people. In other words, we have to look for that in the way to inspire. Some devotees are inspired in one way and some devotees may be inspired in another way. So that's our, that's our duty to see how each individual could be inspired. And then when they're inspired, they also sometimes are willing to change and become more uh, open to whatever else is being you know, offered. So yeah, it's a balance between uh, that friendship and personal interaction and at the same time, the uh, principles that the community is based on in terms of the service needs and the, the philosophical discussions like that. So, uh, <laughs> It's a, it's a learning experience. You, learning comes by observation. Looking at the devotees and seeing how they are reacting or not reacting, and then make your make evaluations on what what's needed and what's not needed. And uh, taking part also, the leaders should take part with the devotees. I find that the most successful temples or when the temple president is actually there in the morning program. <laughs> and that's true. Um, I have, we have a, a temple president here in Slovenia. He's very, very, he likes to chant. He likes to dance. I asked him, how does, do, 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 do you do anything else to manage this temple? <laughs> He's more interested in, Talk, coming to classes and chanting and dancing and just associating with the boys. <laughs> he doesn't spend so much time in his office, but somehow things could get on, get go on. <laughs> so, Maharaj, so this yeah. reminds us of yeah. This reminds us of incident Sushi and Bhagavatam where Amrish Maharaj all the day he used to chant and hear about Krishna, but his, uh, all the management is done by Krishna. <laughs> yeah. Somehow, yeah, somehow things just automatically get done. You can't figure out how it happens. Maharaj, my friend, Amrit is good. Anyone, anyone else yeah. would like to speak? Yeah, I, I, Hare Krishna Amritesh Prabhu has gone. Okay. Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, please accept my humble obeisance too. Uh, I'm working with Tukaram Prabhu. Uh, Maharaj, this question I had in my mind since long time by seeing you in the dancing in such a nice manner uh, that everybody gets fascinated, attracted and gets stuck in the kirtan when you are there in, and dancing. Especially uh, yeah, Today, when you spoke about this example, that how two temple presidents, they were having some disagreement, but uh, after they danced together, somehow they got it resolved automatically. And we also feel that kind of experiences when we also get engaged in the chanting and dancing together. And thank you, Maras, for explaining this. This was a question. And one more point you also raised about how the, if the devotees are happy, they surrender more. In that connection, I have a, a little query that uh, 
the point is that sometimes the devotees they feel demotivated because of their anarthas or their incapability in doing some simple things in devotional practices so how can we inspire them that they also uh, can get more inspiration and take to this process of krishna consciousness more heartfully and surrender more to silla prabhupada's mission well prabhupada talks about <clears throat> how that he actually set up these temples in order to facilitate the six loving exchanges between devotees one was to revealing the mind in confidence and the counterpart is to hear one's confidential thoughts so it's trying to create an environment where devotees if they are struggling they don't recede within themselves and somewhat become less uh active or less um involved in other words trying to create the atmosphere where if you have a problem we're here to help you we're here to solve it to speak about it speak about it with your friends speak about it with the, the leaders and don't be don't think cuz the nature of the mind is it can be very secretive and think that because i have a problem uh, i can solve it by myself i don't need anybody's help a lot of times that leads to uh, a lack of understanding of what the real problem is because the mind will look at it in a certain way and not maybe in a complete way so we're trying to create this environment where devotees can speak and then you know a lot of times when you have problems if you just speak about it for instance when i was with bhakti tirtha swami i would notice that uh, many times devotees would come to him with problems and he would be with them in his in his room and they would be talking <clears throat> and then uh, uh they would come out and i could see that they were happy or they felt satisfied so after a while i one time i asked him i said well what do you say <laughs> what do you say to these two he said i basically don't say anything i just let them talk <laughs> because they need somebody to talk to <laughs> i'm just there to be there to hear and they appreciate that someone is taking an interest and cares about them so therefore in that uh, that alone is satisfy or solves most of the problem <laughs> so yeah just giving a chance for the devotees to express themselves in a non judgmental uh environment not that they are they have a problem they're going to be judged because of the problem or some something there that they can't really express properly so yeah creating that environment of friendship and openness and that takes time it doesn't come automatically and there's certain personalities who can work with that easily and there's others who have a hard time with that in terms of how to bring that out but <clears throat> the devotees oh should always feel that this environment this this satsang this uh, association this community is about uh, is about you about helping you grow spiritually whatever we do in our in our service is meant for our own spiritual growth it's not like i'm giving something and then what am i getting out of it uh, we have to try to create that mood that service is for the benefit of the person who serves I don't know if that was helpful or Thank not. You. Yeah, Maharaj, it was very, very helpful. Basically, it was uh, that how we should listen to others and not let listen to our mind, speak to our friends and try to uh, speak out. And on behalf of a leader, we should also have a mentality to help others. Uh, yeah. Then they will come. Free from this mood of judging others. <laughs> thank you my rest my rest that was a question on behalf of a leader on behalf of a student or a team member uh, i want to ask another question 
that sometimes we have some goals, uh, our personal goals, uh, which are in line with Sila Prabhupada, but it, can, it may not be in line with the manager or it may not be in line with the department head or it may not be in line with my leader in the temple. So in that case, we find a little difficulty to adjust how, although my goals, I can see it on behalf of myself that it is in line with Sila Prabhupada, but why they are not, why the leaders are not appreciating it? In that way, how should I continue and motivate myself? Well, I think that's where you need to speak and open up your mind and question. Well, this is what I feel that's right. And this is what Prabhupada is saying, but I don't feel comfortable in this environment to express it because I feel like I'm not getting, and maybe I'm wrong or I'm not getting any support. So I think that's where you have to have a, a discussion. The, the leaders shouldn't be, feel that if someone questions them, that is a, a personal insult to them. <laughs> Of course, it should be done in the right mood. Prabhupada told us we can question authority, but we should question authority in the right mood, in the mood of wanting to understand and not in the mood of trying to challenge like that. So what we may feel may be correct up to a certain point, but not we don't see the whole picture. So therefore, we have to question, get a clarification from the leaders about how we feel or what is right or what is not right. So that has to be done with humility and not in a challenging spirit. Thank you so much, my Thank you. And that's how you phrase it. Well, <clears throat> I feel this way, but I can see it's not being accepted. So please try to help me understand what is the, the correct understanding? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's personal you interest. You know, we have so much service in our society and we get all busy in our service and that's nice. But, uh, and that's important and that shouldn't be minimized, but we also have to take time for personal interaction to, to uh, develop relationships with devotees. Mara, uh, one question uh, our devotee, Kamilua Pant Prabhu is asking. Uh, he's telling, does devotional service mean selflessness? Selflessness on account of putting others in distress? I don't know if you can get the question or not. I'm also unable to understand this thing. Yes. Can you? Can Hare you Krishna, Guru that? Maharaj. Yeah. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. I can repeat it. Uh, so he's, uh, this is Kamil Pant, and he's asking Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept our humble obeisances. Does devotional service mean selfishness? Selfishness on account of putting others in distress. Well, <clears throat> devotional service is not about putting others in distress. <laughs> devotional service is about, uh, if it's devotional, <clears throat> it's meant for elevation. It's devotion means devoted to the object that you're serving. So uh, we should learn, we should serve in such a way that it doesn't cause distress to others. <laughs> If we say something that people don't agree, agree with, that's not distress. That's just maybe, you know, differences of opinion or differences of understanding. But putting people in distress means causing people anxiety by what we do. What is that anxiety? I don't know. In, in other words, maybe doing our service uh, very carelessly, negligently, inattentively, or using other people in our own service and taking advantage of them without, you know, uh, using them to get the job done rather than 
developing the proper mood a relationship with the person you're working with. And if you see what you're doing is causing some anxiety or distress, then you, you try to ameliorate that in some way or another, or try to understand how to correct it. <clears throat> Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, uh, I, I just have a question, not re related to the class. Maharaj, have you ever had some interaction with Gorgovind Maharaj? With, with who? Gorgovind Maharaj? Yes, Maharaj. Gorgovind Maharaj? Yeah, I, I think Madhavananda Prabhu can tell you my prime interaction, which I spoke recently on one of his uh, programs when he came to New Vrindavan in 1993, I believe it was, and I think it was around the, the month of April, May in 93. And uh, this was one of my first experiences meeting Maharaj. And he spoke a particular pastime from Chaitanya Charitamrita uh, that uh, uh, enlightened everybody in a very uh, surprising way, <laughs> you might say, <laughs> is in his way to bring religious principles back to where it should be was done in a way that uh, <laughs> was very spiritually and intelligently presented. <laughs> But I don't know if you want me to go into the whole story because it's going to take a long time. But in other words, Maharaj was cutting through some Maya that was the community was experiencing and we weren't even aware of the Maya. When he when he presented it, some of us became aware of it and other others became offended by it. <laughs> but then later on, it just so proved in the course of time that what he was saying was 100% important for our spiritual growth as a community. We couldn't see it at the time. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> Tell me yeah, what you got to uh, hear the whole course, story. I, of course, I used, to, <laughs> I used to listen to many of his lectures when uh, he would talk, not many, I, a few of his lectures that I, I had, had. We were always in different places, so I didn't have a lot of association, but in the lectures I did attend, I always found him like Srila Prabhupada, cutting right through the essence of all the nonsense and getting right to the heart of the, the subject matter. He was a sadhu in the real sense of the term. <laughs> For me, it was always enlightening. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Sora Prabhu, you have a question and uh, you have raised your hands. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, Dandavat Pranam. Uh, Ma Maharaj, I have a question that it always happens that we make a resolution and uh, then again we get carried away by Maya. Like how to stay firm or stable in path of devotional service because I have a, like I have experienced it that I make a resolution and then I in the very next moment I get carried away so how can we tackle it well you have to see what is your, what is your resolution whether it's based on something that is beneficial and if it is you know you may find that there are as soon as you start to want to carry it out and there's certain things you didn't see there's certain challenges that come maybe Maya is also coming there to test to see how sincere you are by giving you some difficulty so make those resolutions that are beneficial for your spiritual growth or for the service of the community but so therefore we have to discriminate and see 
what is beneficial and make your resolution. And like, like one of her resolution is, well, I'm going to chant, on Akadasi, I'm going to chant 64 rounds. <laughs> And that's a, a resolution. And then when it comes to a codice and we start chanting and we're going, we find we're getting tired and we can't do it and then we give it up. So it's a good resolution, but it may not have been practical. It may not have been practical. And so, and so you might want to see uh, to and when you make a resolution, and sometimes it's good to check with people who are close to you, your friends, and say, this is what I want to do. What do you think? <laughs> a lot of times we ask for blessings. We ask for, you know, devotees to pray for us, give us some support. That uh, also increases our determination automatically. But I think the, the, the basic thing is to see what does the resolution is. is. It's just some idea that comes to our mind or actually it's something that is understood as something that will give us uh, better qualities, help us develop better qualities in Krishna consciousness, more qualities in the mode of goodness. When maybe uh, something that we can uh, learn from, like we'll gain more spiritual knowledge from it, will gain uh, more uh, enthusiasm in our service from it. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, thank you for sharing your mercy. And my doubt has been cleared. Thank you. Okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Uh, there is a question on the chat. It's from Jignas uh, Prabhu. Dhanvat Pranam, despite in having Krishna a consciousness of Krishna, sometimes material material things attract devotees like me. How to overcome at that time and manage our thoughts? <laughs> Just Janari Krishna. <laughs> so what, I don't know what else to say to that one. <laughs> If you want to manage your thoughts, as soon as you chant Hare Krishna, it becomes manageable, right? <laughs> we are overcoming our, you know, yeah, there's like, I think we responded to the, the, the devotee just before that. You're going to get challenged. As soon as you try to make advancement in Krishna consciousness, just like when devotees accept initiation, they, you can expect you're going to get challenged right after that. And you're going to think, what did I do wrong? <laughs> but it's just, it's just Krishna allowing Maya to uh, help you grow from the principle of some difficulties or some challenges, maybe exposing some of our attachments letting us see our attachments. So that's the process of purification. We'll be faced with difficulties or challenges because Maya knows where, you, where you're weak and she'll go for that just to strengthen you. The example is if you're the two people are fighting in a ring. They, they got this sport called boxing and they start pun punching each other. So if one person hits another person and causes some injury and the fight is still going on. That person is going to think, here's his weak spot. I'm going to hit that spot again. So Maya is like that. She knows your weaknesses and she'll um, challenge you on that either tempting you or making things difficult. And that gives you the chance to cover that spot and to overcome that weaknesses and then grow from those obstacles, from those challenges. So managing your thoughts means to, you know, take shelter of Krishna and continue on.
Hare Krishna Prabhu, I think that answers your question. Uh, if you have... Prabhu, do we have any more questions from your group there? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Uh, Anjali, let Tukaram speak. Okay, Prabhu. Okay, Guru Maharaj. Mara, I think it's already very late. Everybody will be attending morning to room more. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, all right. Here it's almost uh, we'll, here it's almost ten o'clock. Oh, I'm sorry, I lost no, no. track of time. <laughs> no, no problem. No, we are very happy. We are very grateful to you. Uh, we are actually realizing we want to continue the session, <laughs> but unfortunately, it's very late. <laughs> we, are, we are we are very much enlightened by your and uh, yeah. Well, getting students. getting up early in the morning is yeah. We have to get up early enough. Okay, thank you. And I'll uh, offer my obeisances to all the devotees and especially thanks, thank you, Madhavananda Prabhu, for organizing. Hi, Krishna Maharaj. Thank you so much. I, I just want to make one little comment, if I can. I, I think a lot of the devotees, I, first of all, the devotees should know one wonderful thing about Chandramali Maharaj. He was one of the first devotees in ISKCON to start prison preaching. And he started doing that in the 80s. He's been doing it for like almost 40 years now. And a lot of times when I hear from the IYF devotees in Bhubaneswar, it, it sounds like they feel like they're in prison <laughs> or something because <laughs> they're going to school, they have to associate with Maya, and what am I going to do? And it's so difficult and I can't fit in with people. And it's very, very hard. And that's part of the reason why I, I asked Maharaj to say something about community. And I hope the devotees can contemplate the really valuable instructions Maharaj gave that the essence of community is individuality. That's something I, I was hearing from you. And how important it is for the IYF devotees to develop community. Otherwise, you're going to really struggle. It's going to be very, very hard at school and, and, and with non-devotees. Maharaj, I just wonder if you have any further comments in that line for any any final thing you can say to the devotees for their prison situation <laughs> at school and like that? <laughs> oh, you mean about that other part of their life? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, the more be the more you become Krishna conscious, the more you can deal with it. <laughs> and Krishna will give you the strength to somehow or other not be affected so much by the negativity that surrounds your responsibilities. When we're, when we're like them, then we automatically get pulled into it. When we're trying to get out of that mood and we're not so strong, we kind of find ourselves always struggling. But when we're a little bit more stronger in our own spiritual practice through good sadhana, in practice, we can somehow or other carry that with us. And in that area of working with secular society, we call it a necessary burden. It may be necessary at a certain phase in our life where we have to go through this. And for whatever reason, to achieve something or to complete something. But, uh, you know, it's just, I guess the example is... Um, what's the example? When you're in a rainstorm uh, and if you don't have a sufficient amount of clothing or covering, you're going to get wet. But if you have all the, all the necessary rain gear, umbrellas, shoes, and everything else, you can be in a storm and you're not at all affected by it. So the storm of material life can be, uh, what we say, kept at bay by the strength of our own Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm. So that means that our that those times that we're spending with the devotees should be done with, with as much quality as we can, uh, you know, maximize. So we can get strength and support, enthusiasm and friendship in that, in that environment. I have a humble suggestion too, Maharaj, and just in closing, I, I think this will be very pleasing to Tukaram Prabhu and all the IYF devotees. My humble suggestion is that you should come here sometime to Jagannath Puri 
and you should stay here in our ashram. We have a very quiet, nice place, and we can take you around to some of the ancient temples and places and feed you and, and get your sangha. And then maybe while you're here, you can give class once or twice to the devotees in Bhubaneshwara. Is that a good idea too, Karam Prabhu? Yes, Prabhu. Amazing idea. <laughs> Now everybody, because you have spoken on this platform, everybody get to know and everybody wants to join. <laughs> <laughs> I think just by uh, seeing the, the jolly Tukaram, it's an, an impetus to come and, <laughs> and associate with the devotees in, <laughs> in Bhubaneswar, which is every time I've been to Bhubaneswar, I've always had a nice experience. Huh? Um, I'm grateful for that. Those memories still are with me. I, I'm very I grateful for all your, all your friendship and, and, and time you've given us, Maharaj, over the many years in so many ways. Thank you so much. And thank you for the program tonight. The devotees really, really appreciate it. It's so exciting for them. They don't... Tukaram is very special, but, but to, to be able to hear from, from you all the way, it, it's just really, really exciting for them. And I just have to say one thing. I'm I'm... I'm an avid reader, subscriber for the, since the beginning of it, Katha, Kamu, Katamrita, Krishna Katamrita, the, the newsletter that you put out every Ekadasi. I haven't missed reading one of them since they've come <laughs> out. <laughs> I, 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 I get them on my computer, I print them out, I read them, and then I pass them on to the I pass them on to the, the other devotees. We keep a, we keep a, 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 a stock of all of them that's printed out in our library here in Slovenia, and some of the devotees are reading them. So that's a wonderful service. And the fact that you always keep it Krishna conscious in the most uh, interesting way is makes that, that whole newsletter just like something that we look forward to reading all the time. At least I do. Anyway. Thank you so very it's much. It's amazing. An know. amazing service. It's really steady for, I don't know how many years, maybe more than 20 years now. Issue number 500 is coming up. <laughs> so that's, uh, oh, I see 500. And then you, if you divide it into 26 weeks a year, how does that, how does that work? <laughs> per month, <laughs> two per month, 48. Oh, wow, my God. How many years is that? 48 times, <laughs> 48 issues a year? No, that's, that's less than that. It's 24 issues 20, a year, right? 24, and it is the leap month, leap, year, leap month, and then it means 26. We started okay. in 2000. We, we've been doing it for just a little over two, 20 years now. We started in 2001. And there's one thing I know, noted too, and this is really, I always look for it, is that numbers of <laughs> subscribers always increases every issue. <laughs> That's amazing. And I have to really congratulate you on one issue that I read, which just, I read it about two or three times, and that is the history of the life of Lord Chaitanya in his connection with his relatives in Jagannath Puri. Oh. Boy, that Radha was Radha the Prabhu most amazing. Article. Yeah. Yeah, that was amazing. That was an amazing story. And so interesting, enlightening, and it just really showed Lord Chaitanya's connection with Lord Jagannath. It was just so beautiful. Yeah. Thank you, Marsha. Yeah, we, we just recently, I don't know if you saw, I sent you something, we started a program called GORA, the Gaudiya Odia Research Association. And we're hoping with your blessings and the blessings of the Vaishnavas to research rare little old, little known Odia books like this book right here. This is Roy Ramananda Padavali. It's a collection of songs of Ramananda Roy. And uh, we're, this is one of the first books we want to translate and print. And anyway, we're hoping to come out with many more things like this with the help of, of Tukaram Prabhu and, and the IYF devotees in Bhubaneswar. And your blessings, Marish. It's an ocean of uh, uh, rare nectar that's uh, surfacing from you. <laughs> it's really amazing. <laughs> Thank 
Krishna. And we're, I'm grateful for that and of course for your friendship over the years. I'm very serious, Maharaj. We'll be so happy if you come. Krishna Chaitanya Maharaj stays with us every time he comes to Pori. We have a room for him and, and we'll, we'll try to take care of you. Think about it. After the pandemic, I don't know okay. what's happening. <laughs> no, I'll, first opportunity, I'll, I can get to India. I'll definitely come to Jagannath for you. Okay. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you. My so obeisance to India? all the devotees. <laughs> Thank Krishna. you. Hare Krishna. I hope. We hope to see you soon, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining. Thank you. Thank you.